So from now on, if this number is bigger than it was previously, in this case at least 1002, I will release another video. video, 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 video. Okay, enough of that. Um, the clamp on the lamp does obviously not fit my daughter's IKEA shelf, so let's build an adapter for it. We'll start off by creating a mock-up for the actual shelf so that we'll get some crucial dimensions correct. Just center the cross and we should be done. Or maybe not. We need to remove those additional lines to make the sketch correct. There we go. Uh, there's one small detail left to do. Uh, the top and bottom sides of the shelf are slightly larger than the sides. They stick out uh, about two millimeters on each side. So let's fix that with a simple extra pad and then we'll mirror the pad along the horizontal axis. So now we can create the shape binder so that we can use it as a reference for our adapter. The adapter needs to be the active body and the shelf needs to be selected before pressing on the shape binder icon. Then we need to hide the shelf part so that it's not in the way when we are trying to click on the shape binder reference. Let's do just that and click on the back face here uh, as a basis for our sketch for the adapter. We'll use the outer edge of the shelf as a reference and then just sketch around it with a small spacing so that the printed part will not be too tight. Point 0.2 millimeters is usually a go-to for me when I want to have some margin. Then it's time to pad it. And now I don't really know what else to do actually. So let's just create a new part and make a mock-up of the lamp as well that might help us decide how we want to go about this so another shape binder the same way as before referencing the shelf and i just uh, drew the rectangle there to have a sketch to align i always forgot which axis is the correct one and if it should be plus or minus so I'm just using that square to figure out <clears throat> where to place it. Now we can delete the, the square and actually start drawing this uh, lamp clamp shape. This fiddling never gets old, and it happens if you set the constraints in the wrong order. So, yeah, it's always fun to try to figure out which line is which after they get all tangled up. Now we can place it provisionally somewhere and note 
notice that I keep the sketch uh, not fully constrained so that uh, we have some room to play with and don't need to make any de de any hard decisions at this point. And then we need some fillets as well. Um, this poses a smaller problem when we need to create the, uh, uh, the next parts because we don't have a center point here so we need to make a line between them and add a point, a center point on the line to be able to create this circle in the middle. Same thing needs to be done with the detail down below as well. Sometimes you can get really far by just keep on extruding cylinders. And there we have it. Now we can uh, have a lot better view on what it is we, we actually need to achieve here. So we need to extrude some kind of a block in between there. Um, and now we can also play with the positioning of the, of the lamp because we didn't constrain it completely. We can make the mock of our lamp more useful by creating another shape binder uh, for this as well. So let's do that. Let's make the adapter the active body, which we didn't here. It needs to be in bold like that. And then we select the lamp and press the shape binder button. Now we have a shape binder and we can hide the lamp like that. So now we could use the back face here as a reference when we pad the adapter to have something to squeeze on. So let's create a new sketch and use the new shape binder as a reference. And now we could pad the thing, except the lamp seems to be uh, in the wrong position. So we need to take the initial sketch and uh, offset it in the Z direction by half of the width of our adapter, which is 22.5 millimeters like that. Now it's centered. And now we can pad our sketch here. Let's use the other end of our adapter. So let's pad it up to face, the back face, like that. And now we can see that it's uh, padded all the way to, to the end of the clamp. And this is the fun part here, that if we go back to the initial sketch of the lamp and move it, then we can see that our adapter actually follows the position. The lamp is quite heavy, so I'm worried that without any support on the sides of that ledge, uh, the thing might uh, break off. And also it would be nice to have something that hides the clamp a bit. So for completeness sake, let's first add a wing screw to the clamp so that uh, when we build the rest, we don't have anything that interferes with the handling of that screw. Since the lamp is not centered at the origin, we selected the two corners of the lamp and created a dating plane. So now we have a central point where we can add the wing screw detail. And after a few failed attempts in clicking the right buttons, I finally managed to do it correctly. And now we can create a sketch on this plane and just uh, draw the wing screw part here. Um, all I'm, all I care about is the width of the 
wing screw that I measured to be 35 millimeters or so. So let's just draw something that resembles the thing. And then we can pad it symmetrically like that and fill at the edges and yeah, that's that's good enough for me. So now we have a good idea of the physical constraints that our adapter has. Uh, as we can see exactly where the clamp is placed. So now we can do the same thing with a datum plane, uh, this time on the adapter to create the center line <clears throat> or a center plane. So now we can add symmetric features on both sides of the clamp. The lamp is quite heavy, so we'll add some supports on the adapter under the ledge just by creating a triangle here. Now we should be able to pad it and uh, mirror it along the datum plane that we just created. There we go. We still haven't really figured out how to fasten it to the shelf, but let's focus on that now. I realized that I prefer to align the adapter to the most protruding part of the shelf. So I'll just move it slightly like this. And now we can pad the, the side of the thing with some sketches and uh, try to grab, grab onto the shelf somehow. This part will eventually be padded inside the shelf. So 3.2 millimeters gives us a 0.2 millimeter uh, gap for uh, a better fit. Now we have the backside done and now we need to extrude that little L shape inside the shelf with the three millimeter thickness. And as usual, I forget some of the lines in the sketch, making the shape uh, not completely closed. There we go. Let's just increase the padding a bit and uh, yeah, I think that's good. I don't think the adapter needs to stick out that much, so let's go back to the lamp and the original sketch and move it in a bit and see the magic happen. I accidentally moved the lamp down too much, so let's correct that.
There we go. I'm happy with that. Nothing seems to be in the way when using it, so I think it's time to fill it a couple of edges and then uh, create a mesh. If you like these kinds of videos, please let me know and I will create more. Also, give me some suggestions if you want me to change something about how I do these videos. Let's click OK and see the magic happen.